How BlackRock Wokeified Corporate America. Mr. Reagan. Recently, I made a video explaining how BlackRock influences the Biden administration in order to regulate fossil fuels and push America toward green infrastructure, which in turn reaps huge profits for BlackRock investors. If you have not seen that video, I posted it just the other day, please go back and watch that video. It is absolutely critical that everybody in America watches that video. Nobody watched it, it did really poorly. I think I have like 11,000 views on it. I don't know why, I assume YouTube is screwing me over again, but you know, watch it, share it with your friends, anybody who might be interested. Okay, moving on. There is another trend, perhaps even more dangerous than their influence on the Biden administration. And this is the wokeification of American corporations. You see, in the past few years, wokeism has absolutely taken over the corporate culture in America. Now, sure, everybody wants to be ethical. And the radical left has been insisting that in order to be ethical, well, one must be environmentally responsible and socially conscious. And certainly that mentality has infiltrated the corporate culture to some degree over the past decade or so. But since about 2020, this wokeism has really exploded. June has now been declared Pride Month. And throughout this month, every major company in America posts a rainbow logo. Every corporation in America supports Black Lives Matter, despite Black Lives Matter being an openly Marxist organization. We uh, are trained Marxists. Um... And just about every company seems to constantly spout rhetoric, pledging to combat climate change. And yeah, sure, maybe some of the employees at some of these companies genuinely believe in this stuff. They really care about this stuff. But officially, these companies should be taking a neutral position on all politics because these companies need to appeal to the broadest spectrum of consumers. I mean, very few consumers really care about gay pride, whether or not you have a rainbow logo. It doesn't actually improve a company's public relations to strongly support gay pride. And in most cases, it just annoys the heck out of people. So why push this stuff so hard? Well, there's a reason. Three letters. ESG. So ESG, have you heard of this? No. You might have heard of ESG, you might not have, but either way, you probably don't know what it means. ESG stands for Environmental and Social Corporate Governance. And this ESG thing is why corporate America has gone completely woke. I'll explain this in detail in one moment. First, I have to sell you something. Over the years, you've probably tried different investments in stocks and mutual funds. You know they can be up and down all over the place. But with inflation running at 8.5%, its highest rate in 40 years, do you really need that kind of uncertainty? Being able to sleep at night knowing your investments aren't about to crash? Well, that is worth its weight in gold. And speaking of gold, if you've been jumping from one investment to the next, the gold IRA with Noble Gold is Perfect. With gold, you shield your gains from taxes. You keep the real value of your wealth. You own a global asset, something tangible, and you protect your wealth against economic crashes. What is not to like? And this month, for every cash deal above 20K, you'll get an incredible three ounce silver American virtue coin completely free as a thank you. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold. Call 877-646-5347 right now to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. So, what is ESG? ESG stands for Environmental Social Corporate Governance. And this is now something that if you want to invest in a company, they will, on their investor relations page, they'll show you their ESG score. And this is where the woke culture comes from. They've created this phony baloney rating system that says, well, if you mention that you are uh, have a green agenda and you believe in carbon credits, then you get a higher score and therefore you're more investable. And it's very interesting to see how big investors like insurance company, institutional investors, they are steering away from anything that does not have the right ESG rating. And so in order to have investors continue to be interested in the stock, which is important for the company, for its perception, certainly for the, the officers of the company and the shareholders, you have to move this along continuously. And uh, Pride Month is fantastic. Throw up some flags, show the right people, trans, right. whatever. Right. And then you got a high ESG score. That's where all this is coming from. Nike doesn't give a f about black people that way. I don't believe it. They care about their stock price. Of course, individually, there's people who care. There's no doubt about it, but it's driven by ESG. And so how did ESG become so strongly integrated into corporate culture in America? Well, if you clicked on this video, you probably read the title, and so you probably know the answer. 
BlackRock. BlackRock has been the leader and in some ways the ringleader of all of Wall Street in pushing something called ESG investing. And your audience has probably heard that term before. BlackRock is forcing its will upon corporate America. The influence that the CEO Larry Fink has is truly terrifying. I put together a little montage of clips explaining the breadth and weight of BlackRock's influence in my other video about BlackRock. Uh, in that video was about the gas prices. And so I'm not going to rehash that all here. And again, I say, if you have not seen that video on gas prices, go back and watch that video. It's very important. Okay, back to the subject at hand. I will say this, BlackRock has a level of influence that I don't think that we've ever seen on the planet Earth. BlackRock has committed many sins in the minds of many people, but to me, BlackRock's greatest sin was adopting and pushing the ESG rating system. Once a year, Larry Fink pens a quote, letter to CEOs, basically talking about the economy, business trends, and BlackRock's future plans and other stuff like that. And in 2020, his letter indicated that BlackRock was going to be using ESG ratings to assess potential investments. And he indicated that if your company has a good ESG score, BlackRock would invest in you. And if you didn't, BlackRock would pass. You, you've identified 244 companies that are making insufficient progress integrating climate risk into their business models. Or just, we took voting action against 53. Yes. So you're actually you're doing certain things as an activist. And I'm just wondering whether that's an Joe, appropriate, me, appropriate role for you. We, in, in my 2020 CEO letter, we asked for companies to report on TCFD and SASB. And I don't think there's anything wrong about asking for better disclosure across the board. And I think going forward, we're going to, you know, we are seeing more and more companies doing that. And they're doing it because it's good business for them. Stakeholder capitalism is only going to become more and more important. And we do believe th these issues around social issues and how they uh, operate. We believe more than ever before, Joe, that climate change is, in is investment risk. What we are doing is trying to move everybody forward, but we're not an activist. The, but Think about these young people who are joining the workforce now. I do believe the younger generation is going to be more vigorous in terms of social issues and environmental issues. And I know that in BlackRock's own workforce. This is not just going to be a slow change, but I actually believe we're going to see a, an accelerated attitude towards these issues. This is why I've been so vigorous in myself in making sure that BlackRock is as purposeful as we can be and why stakeholder capitalism has to become the, a major component of what every business leader is focusing on. Instantaneously, every major corporation in America switched to an ESG focus. Suddenly, every company was obsessed with being environmentally friendly. They were obsessed with black issues. They were obsessed with gayness. And speaking of obsessed, I am obsessed with this Mr. Reagan mug. Look how beautiful this thing is. If you want to get one yourself, go down to the description below and click on my Teespring link. You can also get t-shirts, sweatshirts, and other really cool things like that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I said that. See, my problem is I haven't been posting enough videos lately, and so I haven't been getting that much scratch, not so much income. I got Nobody is supporting me on Patreon anymore. Well, I'm not really posting videos to Patreon, so I apologize for those of you who have in the past supported me on Patreon. I'm posting some really great videos coming up, so stay tuned for that. Hit the subscription button and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I post because I'm going to be posting some great stuff coming up here, including how did Chris get so fit? Good Lord, that man is, is he eating enough? I don't, I'm definitely not. All right, getting back to the point. So if you find it super annoying that you have to see Black Lives Matter propaganda and pride flags every time you go to Starbucks, or that all your favorite superheroes are being replaced with chicks, or that every TV show pushes a not so secret gay agenda, or that black seems to be the only race in America according to every TV ad, if you find all that stuff annoying, well, you can thank BlackRock for all of those things. So why did BlackRock introduce this system and, and why are they pushing it on all these other corporations. Well, BlackRock has always invested heavily in fossil fuels, and they have been accused of helping destroy the planet in a variety of other ways too. According to the data, BlackRock is the largest investor in fossil fuels on the planet, as well as the main contributor to money flowing into the destruction of the planet's forests and ecosystems, including deforestation in the Amazon. I think that part of the ESG strategy was just a way to quiet the critics. It was good PR. I don't think Larry Fink ever imagined that it would motivate every company to don a freaking rainbow flag logo every June. I think that's what we refer to as an unintended consequence. Now, another major motivator is the desire to be perceived as left-leaning politically. You see, BlackRock benefits greatly from partnering with the US government. 
it's really the same game they're playing in both countries. It's mm -hmm. to suck up to uh, elites, to government power in return for special favors. Here in the United States, BlackRock got the exclusive contract to buy corporate bonds on behalf of the Federal Reserve. During COVID, the Federal Reserve decided they wanted to intervene yeah. in the corporate bond market. BlackRock got that contract. For those of you who don't know what the deep state is, it's BlackRock. I mean, it's not just BlackRock, of course, but BlackRock is a perfect example. Billionaires, corporations, and special interest groups with undue influence on government officials, that's what the deep state is. This is what the deep state is, BlackRock. And although there are certainly Republicans who are willing to sell out the American people in the interest of these deep state players, it's really Democrat politicians who are the guys that you want to go to in order to make these deals. I couldn't give you an accurate estimate of how many Republicans in D.C. are corrupt, but I can give you an accurate estimate of how many Democrats in D.C. are corrupt. 100%. That's how many. And so in order to get into bed with left-wing politicians, it's best to be a left-wing company. And there is one other motivation, according to Larry Fink himself, and it is ironic. You see, the funny thing about ESG scores is that the score really doesn't reflect a company's environmental or social responsibility at all. The whole thing is a massive con. The whole business is built on the idea that you can invest in companies that will allow you to do well as an investor, but also can do some good for the world. Of the 155 rating upgrades that we looked at, we found only one where a reduction in carbon emissions was cited as a significant factor in the upgrade. The rating system and the ratings themselves create exactly the opposite of what many investors believe they're looking at. When they see a highly rated company, they think that company has strong environmental, social, and governance practices in terms of its impact on the world, its sustainability. But what they're actually measuring is exactly the opposite. MSCI is one of the companies that assigns ESG scores, and the CEO of MSCI is not a woke environmental activist. He's not even a leftist as far as I can tell. This guy is a business-focused free market capitalist. He's openly libertarian. And one company has come to completely dominate that business, and, and that's MSCI. Henry Fernandez is the CEO and chairman of MSCI. He said it's, he's a libertarian and that he would like as little government intervention as possible and wanted to ensure that the use of ESG would be one way in which he can stop any socialist ideas from creeping into capitalism uh, at any cost. This is a permanent change in the way capitalism works. And by the way, we're doing this to protect capitalism Otherwise, government intervention is going to come, socialist ideas are going to come, and the like. So it's not against capitalism. It's about you know, uh, dealing with the externalities that are created in capitalism. And so, as this guy says, the ESG scoring system was never developed as a way of driving companies to be more woke. It was rather developed as a way of tricking the federal government into thinking that the private sector was self-regulating. The guys who pushed ESG, including BlackRock's Larry Fink, were just trying to dissuade the government from imposing federal regulations. The reason why I'm, I'm so vibrant on this subject matter, because if we don't transform how we do business, then we, we may see a government telling us what to do. And I much rather have the outcome of of the business community trying to find solutions, trying to be much more socially cognizant of what's going on. We have to do more as business leaders or we're going to have a government that's going to force that change. And I don't have a problem with this. Tricking the federal government into regulating private industry less, I think, is probably a good thing. But the whole ESG con was taken very seriously by woke nutjobs, and since its broad implementation, it has become weaponized to essentially attack companies that have the wrong politics. If a company or even a company's CEO is perceived to be at all conservative, well, that absolutely destroys that company's ESG score. Elon Musk calling ESG a scam. After Tesla was removed from the S&P Global's ESG index, Elon Musk tweeting on Wednesday, quote, Exxon is rated top 10 best in world for environment, social and governance by S&P 500, while a Tesla didn't make the list. ESG is a scam. It's been weaponized by phony social justice warriors. I would argue to you that Tesla's had a greater impact on the automotive industry and, and, and all of the climate related issues than just about any other 
company in the business. And S&P justified their decision to exclude Tesla by saying a decline in criteria level scores related to Tesla's bracket lack of, by the way, low carbon strategy and codes of business conduct. I'm with them on this. I've been warning people about ESG for years. It is, it's gargantuan. It's gonna, it can destroy industries. It will make or break industries. People will lose their jobs over it. But the hypocrisy. All right, so if, if, if he's not on it, ExxonMobil, to yeah. his point, how are they on it? Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Have you ever heard of the diabetes uh, 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 epidemic in this country? What about McDonald's? How are they on it? Same thing. Nike. What about the slaves, uh, the Uyghurs, the way to treat them? I mean, how can Nike be on a list? You want to talk about socially responsible? None of these companies should be on a list if Tesla's not on the list. Here's what's happening. It's, I'm telling you, it's the establishment elite. They're going after him. Bill Gates has a big short position. Mm. They're trying oh, to beat right. this man down. And this is, this is ridiculous, but they look dumb. But people should be afraid because ESG is the most powerful, powerful force on Wall Street right now. And it just feels more subjective than objective. Yeah, it is uh, <laughs> more subjective than objective. And there's no clear-cut rules about it. All we know is powerful. And so despite being a pointless con that does absolutely nothing to reduce carbon emissions or improve American society, this ESG con has had the unintended consequence of hurting companies that are actually reducing the world's carbon emissions. And more importantly to me, ESG has very quickly degenerated American culture. ESG scoring has driven companies like Disney to hire a bunch of woke LGBTQII plus whatever it's called now, activists and Black Lives Matter protesters. And this has turned Disney into a wretched hive of scum and villainy. And this damage may be irrevocable. Some suspect that the new CEO of Disney, Bob Chapek, is trying to de-wokeify Disney, but that's next to impossible now because the company has become so thoroughly infested with woke employees. Another great irony of all of this is that ESG seems to have been disastrous for investors. Larry Fink has indicated lately that BlackRock will actually be moving away from ESG investing. What we said, we're not going to be as prescriptive as last year. We said, and I've always been loud on this, I don't want to be in the environmental police. I think it's wrong to ask the private sector to, to tell all the, the entire society we have to move forward. This is ironic because they were the company that forced ESG on everybody else. Now suddenly they're like, uh... Yeah, you know what, guys? Um, good luck with all that. We are, uh, we're going this way. Everybody with their precious rainbow logos are like, wait, where, where are you going? Look at my pretty rainbow logo. I, I, I did everything you asked. It's all because BlackRock has finally figured out the obvious truth, the truth that we on the right have been shouting at them for years, get woke, go broke. Well, that's it for me. And remember, it's not that our liberal friends are ignorant. It's just that they know so much that is not so. Good night. You know, someone very profoundly once said, well, that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of liberalism. And what is fascism? Fascism is private ownership, but total government control and regulation. Well, isn't this the liberal philosophy? The conservative, so-called, is the one that says, less government, get off my back, get out of my pocket, and let me have more control of my own destiny.